Hi, this is Nori with My Service Depot. Please note that the content you're about to view is meant as a generalization of the smart service job process as a whole. It's not directed at any specific industry or your company's personalized process. However, by learning the basics of smart service, we hope to give you a head start on using our software. If you would like to see a demonstration of a specific function or process in smart service, you should consider visiting us at smartservice.com forward slash webinar and joining the next live event or watching one of our previous recordings. You can also join our weekly QA webinars to speak with your trainers directly. You can sign up for these weekly QA webinars at smartservice.com forward slash knowledge base. This series will be divided into five segments to ensure the best learning experience. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please give us a call at 888-518-0818. If you're interested in purchasing additional live training, please let us know. All of the names, addresses, and contact information displayed in this video are purely fictitious and for demonstration purposes only. Any references to any real entity is purely coincidental. Once iFleet has completed their portion of the job, we can expect to see the results back in the office before sending the work order information over to QuickBooks as an invoice. To review completed jobs, open the office screen and click the Post Work Orders option here. This option will always be located here, but depending on what your company chose to name their work orders, it may say something slightly different. When we click this option, the Post Work Order screen will open and display all jobs which iFleet has finalized and sent back to you. Before we continue further into the job screen, Please keep in mind that a job showing up here doesn't exactly mean the job is ready for invoicing, rather that iFleet has completed the portion of the job you had sent to them. It's up to us at this point to review this information and give them either next steps or post this to QuickBooks as an invoice. The fastest way to tell what a job needs is to look for job exceptions, which show up in red under the job's name. Your company has created a list of these job exceptions which iFleet users can add to their jobs to bring things to your attention. You might see a job exception for parts needed, or the customer was not available. We recommend that you get with your administrator to review how they want you to handle these situations, since there are too many scenarios to cover in this short video. For now, we recommend you click on the job name above the job exception to review the information our iFleet user has contributed. Once you're back inside the job, we can take a look at the job notes and the job items added by the iFleet user. Make sure that their information is accurate and presentable for the customer. In a moment, we're going to practice posting this information over to QuickBooks as an invoice, and once it's over there, we don't want to make further modifications unless absolutely necessary. Before we leave this job record, if you need to print or otherwise obtain a copy of the customer's signed work order, click on the Customer button at the bottom of the job screen here. This will bring you up a level to the job's parent, where you can enter the History and Docs tab, switch over to Docs, and double-click to access a PDF copy of any documents created thus far. Once their information has been reviewed and everything's looking accurate, save and close the job at the top right to return to the post work order screen. If the job was canceled and we have no plans to reschedule this service, you can mark this job as canceled using this drop-down. Otherwise, leave this selection as complete for now. Continuing to the right, you can review the times entered by the iFleet user on this job by clicking the time value in the production time column. Not only can you see their entered times here, but you can modify existing or add missing time values. Check with your supervisor if your company uses Smart Services time tracking features, as these options might be used to generate paychecks for the field later. If your technicians receive payment in the field, you should have an amount here in the payment column. If there was a payment collected on this work order, a payment record tied to this job will be created in QuickBooks alongside the invoice when you post. Speaking of which, we can click the Post button on the right to send an invoice for this job over to QuickBooks. When you click this button, the job will disappear from the screen and an invoice will be created in QuickBooks. Some of you may choose to service customers on a different frequency than you bill the customer. For those who, let's say, service weekly and bill monthly, you will have an extra step to complete your billing at the end of the service period. When you're ready to invoice your customers, head back to the Office screen and click on the Batch Invoices to QuickBooks option below Post Work Orders. Jobs set to use batch invoicing will appear here and wait for you to invoice them. Let's click on this option to see what's available. The first thing you want to do is use the filters at the top left of the screen to bring up the type of jobs you're looking to invoice. 
This could be jobs of a certain type or jobs on a certain recurrence pattern. You can also search for a customer or job name by using these options. Once you find the desired jobs, you can click on the underlined name to see the history that's waiting to be converted into an invoice. In this window, you'll see each history record as its own line, which can be expanded to show the items that were used that day. If you click on the hyperlinked name, you can open the history record itself and remove it if needed. Although you cannot change the information on history records, you can remove them and repost those jobs or manually correct the invoice later. Just like post work orders, we have the option to click the post button at the right to generate an invoice. A useful option in both this window and the post work order screen is that you have a post all button at the bottom right hand corner of the screen. This button has some safety checks, so when you move to use the post all button, it will display a warning prompt and ask you which jobs you would like to post over. You can click the check marks to the left of each job or click the check mark above the boxes here to select all jobs visible in the list. Clicking post all again will send all of these jobs to QuickBooks as invoices. Thanks for taking the time to watch our video. This video is part of a quick start guide playlist for new users. Our team would love to speak with you further if you had any questions about the content we've covered. You can also speak directly with a trainer on the best options for your business by joining our free QA webinars, which you can sign up for at smartservice.com forward slash knowledge base. You can reach a member of our support team by giving us a call at 888-518-0818 or emailing us at support at myservicedepot.com.